And if we will do what he says, Man. we will find grace Amen. in the eyes of the Lord. You see, what you have to understand, when Jesus actually told those religious people in John chapter, uh, John chapter 4, no, John chapter 8, when he explains to those religious people that were looking for the Messiah, the Messiah standing right in front of them, he could not, they could not see the one they were looking for. And Jesus had to tell them, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. They were willing to listen to what all kind of men were saying, but not willing to listen to what Jesus says. Here's the first point I want you to catch here. You know, I don't care who told you, who you hold in high esteem religiously, whether it's your grandmother, your grandfather, your preacher, your pastor, your pope. If they're saying something different than what Jesus says, you better put your weight down on what Jesus says, because Jesus, unless you believe him, you will die in your sins. Yeah. And to those Jews that believed him, he says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciple indeed. And what? You will know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you free. They say, we're Abraham. See, we've never been enslaved in any, in, in any man. Was that a true statement? No, that's a lie. He said, anyone who commits sin is a servant of sin. Jesus told me you've been free from sin. So you got to believe who he is, and you got to believe what he's saying. So what did Jesus say? Jesus said, unless you repent, something truly tragic is going to happen to you. Amen. He was one of that ancient audience in Luke 13 and 3 that they need to repent. Matter of fact, you go back and look at the story, you need to repent. They need to repent now because you don't know when that window of opportunity is going to close. Many times people think because nothing bad has happened to you, you're okay with God. No. Mm -hmm. Nay. Mm. But unless you repent, That's you will perish in a horrible fashion in Luke 13 and 3. Yeah. Jesus also said you must be willing to confess him. He said, if you confess him before men, he'll confess you before his father which is in heaven. Yeah. But if you deny him before men, he will deny you before his father which is in heaven. Yeah. You realize when people deny, when people confess Jesus, they confess him both as Lord and Christ. Yeah. Here's the problem. Everybody wants to be a savior. I can I call Jesus into my heart and my personal Lord and Savior. But you don't want to do what Jesus told you to do. So here's yeah. the point. Everybody wants a savior, but nobody wants to be told what to do. Right. Well, Jesus is not going to be your savior unless he's your Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, you need to confess him as both yes. your Lord and yes. Christ. Amen. If Jesus says you must do something, there is no scenario where you shake a fist of rebellion in his face and it turns out good for us. So when Jesus said you must confess him before men, you need to confess him before men. Amen. Jesus drew the line in the sand. You need to let not just one person, every person you come in contact with, you need to let them know whose side you're on. Amen. Because Jesus said you deny him. What if you call him your Savior, but you deny him as your Lord? You still deny him. You see, what you want to happen is when you stand before the God of creation, what you want is keep your mouth shut. And what you want Jesus to say is that this is your child. He's covered by my blood. Yeah. And you want to hear the Father say, well done, faithful servant. Yeah. You've been faithful over a few things coming up and I'll make you rule over many. Yeah. Here's what you don't want to happen. You don't want to stand before the God of creation and then Jesus say, I don't know this one. Yeah. You see, you have to be willing to confess him before man, but him yeah. to confess you before the Father. Yeah. There's no scenario where you don't do that and it turns out good for you. You must also believe the gospel, how that Christ died for your sins, according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. You see, you need to believe who he is. You need to believe what he's saying. You also need to believe what he did. He died for your sins, Amen. just like the scriptures foretold. When you understand that the scriptures foretold Jesus' death before he ever came and foretold about him having his beard plucked out of his face, him beaten so badly he wasn't even recognizable anymore. All of these horrible things that happened to him. You realize that that's what God is trying to show you? He's trying to show you just how ugly sin is in his eyes. Amen. In other words, what you really deserve is what Jesus got. Amen. That should let you know just how ugly sin is in God's eyes and why you want to get rid of it. You want to declare righteous today. Amen. If God said that's what you deserve. But that also shows God's love for you. Amen. That he's willing to go that far to pay that price for you. He died for our sins according to the scriptures. Buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Why is that the gospel? Why is that good news? Here's the, here's the point. When Jesus died and he suffered all those things and went into the grave, did he die because of his own sins? No. So in other words, since Jesus had no sin, could the grave hold him? No. no. Here's the good news. If Christ died for your sins and your sins are paid for, there may come a time if the Lord does not come back sooner that you'll press your dying pillow and you're going to go into that grave. But here's the good news. Because the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to your life, the grave won't be able to hold you either. Because he's the first group of those who slept never to die again. That is the good news. You see, we need to make sure that we find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. We need to be reminded of this comparison that Peter actually made to Noah yeah. in 1 Peter. In 1 Peter 
chapter 3, beginning in verse 20. He said this to Christians, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few that his eight souls were saved by water. The like figure wherein to even baptism does now also save us. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You must believe who Jesus is. You must believe what he has said. You must believe what he did. And you must be obedient because Jesus said, He that believes the gospel and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. That's what Jesus says. Even if you don't understand all everything that has to do with baptism, you understand that Jesus said it. There is no scenario where you shake a fist of rebellion in the God of creation's face and expect it to turn out good for you. You must do all things that the Lord has commanded. Amen. And God is faithful to give you exactly Amen. what he says he's going to give you. We can find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yes. Don't get yourself caught up in the water. Jesus said water. Unless a man is born with water in the spirit, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. Amen. John chapter 3. Yes. What you have to understand is that God has been good to you today. Amen. By giving you the opportunity to make things right, Amen. to find favor in his yeah. sight. Amen. And upon your faith in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he's done yeah. and what he's saying and what his sacrifice he's made. Amen. Upon your penitent heart and your confession of faith, we'll baptize you in the water. Why? Why? Because Jesus says water. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And God will add you to his family. He'll add you to the Savior. He'll add you to the church of Christ. The only church you read about in the Bible. Amen. And you'll have all the rights and privileges that come along with it. Amen. You'll find grace in the eyes of the Lord as a child of God. Even when you're going through tough times as a child Amen. of God, you have favor that, that other children don't have. Just like my children have favor in my family that, they, that other children don't have. Amen. I love other children, but I love my children differently. Amen. What you have to understand, the Bible actually lets us know something about, uh, about our relationship when you become a child of God. Romans yeah. chapter 8 says, he says, for, for as many as have been led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. Yeah. Don't you know, I know you're not, but so many of us, uh, I'm sorry, he lets us know that we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we receive the spirit of adoption. God adopted us into his family. Yeah. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Uh, yeah. For the Spirit bears with us with our spirit that we're children of God. Mm -hmm. And if children, then heirs of God, yeah. join yeah. heirs with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let me help you understand something here. When it's all said and done, and your time here is over, just like yeah. when Jesus ran his race, he was ushered into the presence of God forever. Yeah. Yeah. We're joint heirs with Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Everything that man Jesus got, you get also. Amen. The signs of days you want to find grace Amen. in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. By believing who Jesus is. Amen. By being, having a pillar to the part, recognizing he's right and you're wrong. If he wouldn't be best, the most beautiful name of mortal tongues in Jesus Christ is your Lord. Yeah. If he wouldn't be baptized in obedience to the teachings of our master and our Lord for the remission of sins, he added yeah. to the same. Yeah. And if we'll do those things, yeah. we'll be declared just. We'll be perfect in our generation. Yeah. We'll begin our life walking with God when we do everything according to his commandments. Yeah. And we must also not only do it today. We must let every single person know that we come in contact with what God has offered us. Yeah. 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 And God is faithful. Won't you be faithful today? Yeah. Won't you find that grace? Won't you come? Yeah. We walk with God.